how I was always like supporting somebody. Don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. Mm -hmm. He also had like different, you know, songs talking about independence. Your, your projects, it's like volume one, volume two is like doing it yourself. It's like just to get you started. So like even then it's like growing up, like I still was almost like in a category of my own. Mm. You get to stay now, <laughs> we're about to go out. I write it down or whatever the case may be. I want to challenge you to push yourself, bro. Be Anybody like, who's successful, like, they had to sacrifice a lot of different things. It had to be a little bit more self-serving. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who is a creative that's mm. just in their head? I'm free. I'm free. Won't let the enemy get the best of me. And I'll be. I'll be. But you created me. This is my destiny. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. We are here. We are here, ready to go, ready to do our thing. Listen, I asked this guy to come back again because he gave you guys a lot of jewels, a lot of bars. Um, Pac, you gave us those five steps of being how to build your brand, and it was it was super dope, man. So, welcome back again, my brother. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Uh, for those of you who might not know, real quick, just let them know who you are. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Produced by Pat. You can find me on Instagram there, too. And um, I call myself a brand and I pretty much help entrepreneurs uh, create, develop, and present a signature offer. So, in a nutshell. Let's let's get into it because you you have helped me tremendously in regards to being my brand and uh right right like everything that I've been doing from my music all the way now to even this podcast you have helped me just kind of like get out of my head um there was things that I was thinking about and you was like bro all right let's sit down let's talk about it let's strategize it and let's make it come to life right, right. so I want to kind of go way back to like genesis of Pack yeah I want to know a little bit more about Charles right yeah. I want to know who were you before you became this brand a &R? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, like, it, it's always been something that, like, I've done in some type of capacity. But if you take it back, I guess, let's say my interest in music, it kind of started off with my pops. Okay. Because uh, he used to record and write his own music and stuff, too. So oh, that's dope. Like, yeah. what kind of music did he write? He was doing gospel, actually. Gospel music? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, so did you grow up in, like, a gospel kind of background i definitely did talk definitely to me about did. that experience yeah i mean everything that we was listening to music wise it was always on the gospel music channel like mm. i didn't know too much about anything other than other than that world wow like, growing up so so were you like heavily in church as well at that time not a whole, not like super super heavy but um it was points where um I had like a godmom and stuff like that. They had their own church. Okay. So um, we used to pretty much it used to be just us. Mm -hmm. We used to have like run out this space and um in the park. Mm -hmm. And um, he used to my dad used to sing praise, praise sing, praise worship stuff like that. Oh, that's and it was like probably about a good twenty or so of us. And they still have their church today, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's super dope. So, yeah. so you kind of like musically inclined. You have you come from like a music background, basically. If your father was doing music, yeah. Much, so, yeah. all right, when it came to music, with your part, were you, like, making beats? Were you singing? Were you rapping? Like, I, what were you doing? Yeah, to be honest with you, I wasn't, I wasn't doing too much. I was just observing, you know? Mm. Like, of course, like, we have service, like, you know, you sing with them and stuff. But I was mm. never, like, out front singing with them or nothing like that. So, it was just, you know, if I see what's going on. I'm just picking up and soaking in a whole bunch of um, just information, I guess. Mm. When did music become, like, something that you say, yo, I might want to do something like this? Uh, maybe, maybe when I was like in third or so grade, I remember, um, it was this particular house that we used to live in. And, um, that's kind of like when I started to, I guess, get a little bit more exposed to like music and stuff that was out there just by way of like going to the YMCA or riding the car with my sister or, uh, just being at school, you're able to hear like different songs and stuff. So like one of the things I used to do was, um, like let's say it's a song that I like, I used to like rewrite it, but like I used to finish the bar how I wanted to. <laughs> that's that makes sense. Fire. So that's kind of like how I learned how to start like writing raps. God, that's dope. Yeah. So so like you'll take you'll take a song, 
and you'll start rewriting the song and then you'll basically finish the lyrics the way you wanted it to be fixed right finished what what kind of music would you do it with was it everything or just hip hop it was it was, hip-hop. it was hip-hop so like for instance like let's say at the time because he was like the biggest thing now like uh bow wow like little bow wow <laughs> yeah. i would take like the start of his bar and then i'll like change the end of it to make it like whatever i wanted that's different, bro. <laughs> That's like a different type of person. Who who would think? How old were you at that time? I don't know. This was maybe like third, fourth grade. How old old you are in third, fourth grade? That's right crazy. So okay, so did you like did that like influence you to start making music since you was like yeah? I mean, you know, I was writing writing stuff like that for a while. That's kind of like how I got started. And um, then I had like another um, one of my my guy brothers. Uh, he started getting into music a little bit too, mm-hmm. and he had like his own rap group and stuff that he had when he was in middle school they used to like record songs and stuff so i started kind of getting into recording a little bit around okay that time. okay so where are you from where are your family from uh miami okay miami so yeah. miami is florida florida is like always hot and everything like mm-hmm. that never never really cold and all of that right used to walk around with like shorts on all the time yeah don't hurt me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm i'm from new york so like it was always like a different change in temperature and stuff like that. So right. I used to always get jealous during school time <laughs> because I'm like, yo, if I lived in Florida, I'll be good all year long. Right. Yeah. Now, so so we, we you writing, you you recording a little bit. Uh, was there anything else that started happening musically? Because I know that like, if I'm not mistaken, you also make beats and different things right, like that right. too. So how did that kind of like come in alignment from finishing the lyrics to like producing and making beats? Right. So um. After, you know, um, when I started getting towards, like, middle school, uh, I started to, like, write a lot more. Okay. And um, from there, it used to be this site called SoundClick. Okay. Where you'd be able to listen to different beats and you're able to, like, download them. Mm-hmm. And you're able to, like, record. Like, they have, like, charts and stuff of, like, popular producers. Uh-huh. They have, like, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beats. And they have tags on them and stuff, of course. Which is, like, that's what kind of, like, introduced everyone to, like, to buying uh, premium rights and all, you know, oh, exclusive cool. rights and all of this stuff. And of course, I ain't had no money, so mm-hmm. we were just, you know, buying the um, or getting the the free downloadable beats that was out there, mm-hmm. and we'll start like writing and, and uh, we record it here and there. I didn't record a whole lot, but I I was actually getting pretty good at writing mm-hmm. writing songs. So from there, I was actually doing a little something. And then um, actually, I remember um, it was one of my homies, Neil, that stayed in my neighborhood he had a whole studio set up okay and he used to record songs and stuff and um it was one song in particular that he he recorded it wasn't him as an artist but he recorded it in his um in his room or in his setup Mm -hmm. and it actually like kind of got famous like it was a song it was um during the time where rick ross and 50 cent was beefing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was some dude he made like a um like a parody song you know it was like officer ricky or something like that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh shoot <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah that's that song kind of like went up on um social media and kind of got a little popular so i was kind of you know getting into the the recording I, even though i wasn't recording myself i was kind of like scared to record mm-hmm. but um transitioning into you know making beats this was i moved up to atlanta mm-hmm. my 10th grade year um i had this history class and after class, I used to always see, like, right across from us, it was this, like, class where, like, I just see people just kind of, like, bobbing their head and they like this. I'm like, what's going on in here? Like, mm-hmm. this looks interesting. So it happened to be what they call music tech. Okay. That's where, like, you actually go there and they, they teach you how to make beats. Oh, that's lit. So I made sure um, my next year, my 11th grade year, that I had that class. And that's where it, mm. that's where it started. So when you started making beats, did you like start making your own and then like putting your own lyrics and like recording it together? Like, did you get into that or? Yeah, yeah. It took a little minute for me to um, learn how to make a beat that you would want to rap on or sing on or something like that. Because mm-hmm. um, the, the the software we were starting off using was Reason. Reason is super I, Yeah, I remember Reason, yeah. I, yeah. I still know Reason, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, it took a little minute, but I do remember this is around the time um, when I'm at, I'm in um, Atlanta, and this is when I started to get a little bit more involved in church and stuff like that, too. Mm. We also had, like, a rap team at church. Oh, so, so rapping at church, that's lit. Yeah, so we had a group called um, OFC. 
<laughs> what is the, what, what did that stand for? All five for Christ. All five for Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we used to write like remixes and and um, had a lot of original music too. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the songs that we did was one one that I produced. Like we, we used to do a few different beats that I did. No, nah, that's but, fire, bro. So so okay, so you got the the beats, you making the music, yeah. uh. You doing some church stuff on fire for Christ? That's yeah. a little cheesy, but um, <laughs> you so so you doing that, and then did is that when you created this name produced by Pack? Because yeah, I, I know you go by that name, so like yeah, it was is that where it came from? Yeah, some similar around there. So simultaneously, as all of this happened, my ninth grade year before I moved to Atlanta, um, my best friend um at the time his name was uh, uh Keon. Mm-hmm. Known by Johnny. Okay. And um, he was getting into music and recording and stuff as well. And we would just really just chop it up all the time just about music, sports, whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, as we as I'm doing this simultaneously, learning how to make beats and all this different stuff, he's actually like, and this is time where like people just don't drop projects and, and have like a proper mixtape cover that looks like high quality and all this different stuff. He dropped, he actually dropped a project, he just started rapping. Drop the project and it's like still one of my favorite projects to this day, and it's that's, called um, a name to remember. That's fire. And two are, and as he was doing that, I'm doing this on the other end, and I'm like starting to feed him, you know, information. Oh, um, I see you dropped this, or I see you dropped that. Have you thought about doing this? Have you thought about doing that? Start, you know, helping him uh, in a sense, making what his brand is a little bit, you know, more engageable, and you know, like this is kind of like the the A and R and kind of mm. getting started to a degree. Okay. Um, I'm much, you know, doing it with people that's I'm around. I'm mm-hmm. surrounded by. I'm also that's that's how I got it started with him. And I also wanted to kind of like be involved. So mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, let me. Everybody want to rap and stuff like that. Let me like produce for him or do his graphics and stuff like that. And that's when I came into play. That is lit, bro. So you've always been this like helper or like I'm gonna say A and R, but like kind of like manager, yeah. like background in the back scene, just kind of pushing people. Where does that drive come from? Like, why, what made you want to help him, you know what I mean, get his thing out and get it to another level? Why, why do you, what does well, that come I, from? I just believed in, uh, in the, the product. Like, the mixtape was fire. You know, that was one of my, you know, uh, uh, we wasn't like close, close at the time yet, but we was, you know, still very, mm-hmm. very much in communication and stuff. And um, I just pretty much just wanted to be around because it was something like, it was like a little movement actually that he had going on so it was pretty cool is that like how it is so what what drives you to 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 want to help anybody is it the same thing it's always like is a movement happening this person has a product you're interested in and you're like yo i just want to help this person is that your motivation a lot of times a lot of times it's just like you know just having a good um like for whatever reason you find a tv show that you like and then you just keep watching the tv show because it's like oh i'm bested like Mm -hmm. it's interesting it caught my attention um, it's actually fun to kind of see how it builds and how it, you know, move around and shake and stuff. So, yeah, that's that's just, you know, anybody that I work with, like, I genuinely like what you got going on for the most part. Do you ever work with people that you don't really like, but they're like, yo, Pac, I need help building my brand, but you don't like it? Sure, I'm able to kind of, you know, separate the two. Like, it's somebody that I know, like, I don't necessarily, um, like, his genre of music is not something that I would listen to, per se, but I, I do see what he got going like he does have a way to package it himself up that's really interesting so yeah i give him tips oh yeah like what's your personality like you should really like lean into uh the whole comic book type of and become mm-hmm. a character and your your projects is like you know volume one volume two is like it, it's it's real it, it can make it you know um this stuff stick and be like a lot more fun especially when we start getting into like merch and stuff mm-hmm. but the t-shirts and mm-hmm. You can actually do comic books if you want to create like storylines and stuff. So, who are some people that you worked with? Well, of course, uh, Johnny Mays. We uh, we we done some work as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, did some stuff as well with uh, um, Lean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also did um, like we talking about other people that might be like I, did, I produced a song for Lil B. Okay, Lil B. Yeah, oh that's fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was cool. How about with like brand A and R stuff? Like, who, who are some people you work with? Oh, yeah, with? yeah, sure. So, I'm not sure if you uh, remember during the pandemic, it was this guy's name is Filet. Okay, He Filet. does, um, like, sports 
comedy commentator. Okay. So like highlights. Yeah. Like he he has like his voiceover. He do like funny videos and mm-hmm. stuff. So he be like step back, tween, cross, cross. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. So um yeah, me and him work uh, together in some capacity during the pandemic. The the stuff that we worked together didn't quite get off the ground per se, but he did pay me for some work. Okay. That um where I I, I did some merch um like a, a collection of merch. Okay. That I designed for him. Uh, well, yeah. um, also worked with uh pretty closely with uh Curtis King. Shout out to okay, Lee Kurt. All right, all right, shout out to Curtis King, man. <laughs> he's he's moving. He's doing a lot. Man. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Yeah, I definitely worked with him, uh, especially with his. This project he did in 2022-ish, mm-hmm. 2021, called um, Do It Yourself 2, yeah. where he pretty much, the concept of the album was he did the cover, he produced all the beats, he wrote all the songs, he self-produced it and self-published it. So, like, you know, you, you don't have to have it all to get it started, but you, as long as you get started, you do it yourself. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to do it alone. Yeah. But you got enough to get it started. So... That was kind of like the the theme of the of the um, the album. Mm-hmm. He also had like different you know songs talking about independence, business, things of that nature, uh, and and also just like everyday stuff too. So yeah. so in regards to like helping all these people and helping them build their brands and just being like the producer behind these people, like does this motivate you as well, or is it just something you just like? Oh, I'm just gonna do it. Like how, how mm-hmm. much does it help you when you help other people? I just throughout my time, I probably helped launch and put together about about twenty projects with all of the wow. artists that I've worked with. Yeah. Um, whether that's only doing the cover art or whether that's you know and on the whole process from start to finish mm-hmm. with the concepts of the songs, the sequencing, rollout plans, things of that nature. So it's it's really it helps um, for me in my opinion, just the whole experience of building something releasing it and then watching it do its thing mm-hmm. like that that brings like satisfaction like and, and that is in every aspect you don't even have to be just music in general mm. what do you mean by that that part what you just said you well there's like you know because whether i'm doing this in the capacity of um the creative side mm-hmm. or if i'm like you know for my job or work or something like that like in in that type of aspect i, I enjoy that process too yeah so i remember when I first started working with you, I had this project called Perception. And for some reason, like, I kind of, like, knew what I wanted, but I didn't. Uh-huh. And me and you kind of went through, like, sessions and sessions of you just, like, helping me just get out of my head. Yep. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who is a creative that's mm. just in their head about that idea that you're trying to get out? Like, what what's some advice that you can tell them to help them, like, just push through it? Well, um, when it comes to, I guess, bat- battling that struggle of knowing what, like, how you want to put together a project, releasing it, putting it out there to the world, uh, just have, like, the understanding that as much as you can, as you try to put these things together and these ideas, you try to execute it, once you release it, it's no longer yours anyway. Mm. So, like, it's for the people to decide, like, what they decipher, what they take from it, what they like from it, what they don't like from it. So, like... You could put all this energy into releasing this thing out to the world and you don't have any control over like what happens after the fact. You put yourself in the best position. So like why not just go ahead and release it? You always just release something else. That's nah, but that's so scary because now how about if we at we release it and nobody likes it? Mm-hmm. Does that mean that what we was doing was like bad? No, I think it really just, like, if nobody liked it, then how many people are we asking? All right, how about if, like, 10 people didn't like it, but 20 people did like it, but 10 people didn't like it, and we just, like, focus, we, like, dang, those 10 people didn't like it, so that means there's some things we got to adjust. Is that how we should operate when we're releasing projects and stuff? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that, because, like, that's a very, very small sample size. Mm. So, like, if you ask 30 people, and then you said 10 people like it, 20 people, that's still pretty, you know, decent. But even then, for those 10 people that didn't like it or was unresponsible, whatever the case may be, um, it might not have been for them. That's, you make that sound like so easy, but a lot of times we really uh, focus on the people who don't like our stuff versus mm-hmm. the people who do. Mm-hmm. So that's, you just got to keep... You, that's you, tough, bro. You, you got to keep putting yourself out there, getting um, 
you know, people that have ne never heard of what you got going on, interested in what you do. Because especially like when we get started, uh, we kind of depend on our friends and family to hold us down and support us. But um, as you know, like that's one, it's not really that practical because uh, oftentimes they're not our target audience. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. You just said our friends and our family oftentimes they're mm -hmm. not our target audience. Mm -hmm. You got to unpack that a little bit because most times we feel like we got to send it to mama and, and uncle and yeah. cousin, brother, For sister, sure. and like sure. they should be the ones rooting behind us and all this yeah. stuff. So what do you mean by that? Like all these people that's in your life, whether it's friends, it's family, it's your mom, whatever the case may be, uh, their role in your life is that they don't have to be your fan. So like that's what, uh, like a pill, like a hard pill to swallow because it's, it's like realizing that they're not entitled to like what you got going on or support what you got going on. Um, it doesn't mean that they're any less of a friend or any less of a family member. It just might not be for them or something that they're interested in or they might not see the value in it. Because, like, a lot of times, like, let's say you got a a T-shirt, a T-shirt business. Mm -hmm. And let's say um, you started off with those people around you, as you should, mm -hmm. right? And um, let's say the first round, a lot of them did buy it. But, like, now, like, moving forward, you got the same shirt. They're probably not going to buy it again. They're not going to buy it again, bro. They're not going to buy it you again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the, that's the time for um, you to actually, like, start to build your business based off of, like, you have to find your tribe. You got to find, like, your people that's going to support you. Mm. And and um, not only support you, but it's actually interested in what you have going on organically mm. versus, hey, check this out, man. Like, I mean, that's cool to do as well, but um, it may not go how you think it would if you depending on that. Is that how you operate in in your life when it comes to just making things happen? Is that how you operate? You you don't look at you don't look for family and support from friends and different things like that. You kind of just focus on building your tribe. Is that how you? Yeah, to a degree. Um, I do know that. Like, I do have support from my family too for whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I, I've kind of you know separated lines. And if they are interested, then yeah, just come on to this world. Let's yeah. Let's let's um you know experience that. If we had to go into uh, Charles' world, mm -hmm. we had to enter into your world and just kind of like get to know you, because you just seem so chill and calm and like relaxed. Like, what what can we expect from you as a person? That's a good question, because um, for me, like I'm very like simple but complex. Like it's oh. like these oxymoron type of situation. Like I'm very upbeat, but I could be reserved at the same time. Mm. Where does that come from? I don't know. Maybe it's it's a mixture of like my parents' personalities. Cause my dad is like super outgoing, and my mom is is very outgoing as well. But my mom can definitely like be a little hermit too. Mm. <laughs> my sister is like that too. So so simple and complex. A simple and complex person. Like I'm I'm trying to really like understand Forgot, like that. what that means. Right? Yeah, that's that sounds like crazy a little bit. Like a simple and a comp. Tell talk to me about the complex part of you. Yeah, the complex is more like the thinker. Like, I love learning. I love asking uncomfortable questions. I love um, figuring out new information and stuff. So as I absorb this information and, and I start to change my worldview on things, it's not the, the average um, train of thought. Like, somebody could think, like, let's say you're watching a movie, right? And you're in the theaters and you're watching a movie and a lot of people just kind of, like, sit there and, like, digest and try to, you know, comprehend what's going on me in my head not only am i doing that but i'm also like trying to figure out the movie <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> now that I came up with like what's probably gonna happen <laughs> in the first like 30 40 minutes <laughs> does movie. it does it turn out the way you think sometimes it do sometimes and that and that's the i think that that's what i like like to appreciate like um good writing mm. it's like a nice little curve or like, it's not so predictable or it didn't go exactly how I thought it would when I'm, like, trying to anticipate what's going on. Like, most people just sit there and watch it. Like, I'm me. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is about to happen. They're setting this up. They're setting this up. They're setting this up. <laughs> like, look out for this. Look out for this. All this is going on in my head. So, and all in all, like, that's just how my mind works. Mm. The Now, the simple part yeah. is it's more so because, like, at the core of everything that I got going on, that who I am as a person, just good energy, like you know, very calm, very collected, very same, very similar. Mm. 
Um, that's kind of like my demeanor most of the time. So do people understand you? That's another thing too. People have a grip of who I am too, but I'm very private as well. For in a, in a lot of ways. Where does that come from? Probably, probably my parents too. My mom probably. Yo, how was it growing up, real quick? Because you just yeah. you just mentioned your parents twice. So, like, yeah. did you grow up in a single parent household? Both mm-hmm. of your parents in the same household? Mm-hmm. What was it like growing up for you? I had both actually. In the same house, living together, or yeah. yeah, we did both. We we um of course started off all living in the same house and stuff, and then they split at a certain point. Okay, and I lived with you know my dad for a little bit. Me and my mom was living with one of my aunts. Uh, we was in Miami. We all was living in that same house. So that just the dynamics in that house was very interesting. Mm, can you talk about it? Uh, yeah, like we we st- like it was about twelve of us staying in that one house, and it was like mostly women. It was just me, my my uncle, my two uncles, and a, and a, and a, my nephew. That was and everybody else was women. How many how many bedrooms and everything was it? Right, was that's it, crazy. Because you said um, twelve people. How yeah. many? Yeah, and um, my room was like more like a hallway too, crazy. <laughs> like a, you know, you had to get through my room to get to the back, but it had like five or six bedrooms. Mm. Wow. So, and when when you were staying with them, mm. how was your relationship with your dad at that time? It was oh, just... it was cool. Yeah. So like, you know, I I spent time over there during the weekends. So like, my dad would take me to football practice or whatever the case, from basketball practice, whatever I had going on. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I'll stay over there too. So it was really. It was really, you know, back and forth. I did. Were you like private then? Like kind of like stay to yourself type thing? Don't really like say much? Yeah, only because um, like even prior to us living in that one house while those people was in it um, and the dynamics of that house like changed too. I kind of grew up like an only child, even though I do have siblings, Mm. just because like the age difference. Mm. So like I know how to play with myself. I know how to entertain myself. I knew how to you know, not bother nobody, mm. but still. Right. So it's like you had your moments. You you knew how to be with, be by yourself. Like you said, you had mm. like, I'm not going to say an imaginary friend, but you said you, you know, you knew how to talk to yourself and different things like that. Yeah. No, I know how to entertain myself. So yeah. like, what, what I mean by that is like, um, so like, uh, let's go all the way back to when I'm like in kindergarten, first grade or whatever. It was this particular house that we used to live in where I used to have like this um, Fisher Price net. Like this, this basketball hoop, I put that thing up all the way to the top, and like I'll be watching the Laker game. My dad's a Laker fan, so um, I used to like watching Lakers. I'm mm-hmm. also a Heat fan too, so um, I used to watch you know Laker game, and I used to like mimic Kobe Bryant mm-hmm. <laughs> when he's not on TV. Like I'm like, oh okay, like I seen that Sprite commercial, he did the 360 dunk. Let me see if I can do a 360 dunk in my room. <laughs> all you hear is <laughs> in my room, like. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like that that was like I didn't need to play with anybody. Only because like I felt like um everybody else was like doing their own thing too. So I had to do something. Mm. I had a lot of toys. I had, you know, yeah. movies. I had my movies I used to watch. Did that affect you like growing up? Did you like grow up like kinda isolating yourself, having those moments? Did that happen a lot? Yeah, I was kinda left to myself mm. a lot. So, so so how did you build friendships with people? Well, I mean, you know, when you're in school and stuff like that, you know, you somebody cool. just talks to you and then you just build a relationship with them. Yeah, I had um one of my I call him one of my brothers now, but he uh me and him met in, in kindergarten, met in kindergarten, and I remember the first conversation that we had. It was like, "What's your birthday?" Mm-hmm. And then his birthday was that before mine. I don't remember, who, uh, <laughs> but I just remember that was the conversation. That's how it started. That's how we like became friends. So mm. like his birthday was one day before mine. Yeah, and now from there, like it just went from there. My parents met his parents and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. literally from kindergarten all the way to about ninth grade, I'm over his house almost every single weekend. Wow! And so you, so you had a friend. Yeah. So you, so you kind of wasn't like by yourself because you kind of had like a, a friend to like. Right, but I had to go there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so when you, when you wasn't over there, yeah. it was just you and you. Right. <laughs> right. So I'm I'm at the I'm at the house playing the game. I'm you know playing Fisher Price or uh-huh. um, watching movies and stuff like that. Like we didn't we went we had times where like we didn't have cable and stuff like that. So I'm popping in VHS tapes mm-hmm. all day watching all my favorite <laughs> stuff, bro. Tell me something about Charles that like people might not know because 
you know, you basically said like you're simple and you're complex, you know, as yeah. far as people like understanding you. Yeah. Sometimes people might not really understand you because you don't let them in. So what's something about you that we don't know? That's a good question. Um, Cause like, even though like I'm private, like I'm not like, I'm very open to it at the same time. Yeah, bro, you you real complex, bro. You... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm very like if we have a conversation, like I'll tell you just about anything. Like, uh-huh. we can have a really good conversation about stuff. And I'm a very good listener too. But tell me something about like I want to know something that you never really said to people about yourself. That's a good question. Cause it's 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 like I don't want to do like a trivia thing. Was like oh. Uh, you know, I I knew this person. And they ended up being fam- like. G- give me, give me, give me like a. This might be this might cool. be on the spot, but like, tell me something about you and give me like a multiple choice, like, and I gotta pick if it's true or not about you. So like, just give me a statement, uh-huh. then give me like a couple options, and then I gotta choose if the options is is correct or not. So I don't know, cause it's like, <laughs> if if I had to ask you, right. What is something that somebody can like understand a little bit more about you that they don't see on the surface? Because like Q, right? You're somebody who's front facing, somebody who's always in the mix, somebody um, who's always looking to help, looking to elevate, looking to you know get energy and mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. Like, what what would be something like if you could give like an example just so I can better? So so for me. Like you just you just describe what the world sees me as, right? Right. right. Well, I would say something about me is I'm a little introverted. Mm. Nobody would believe that, mm. right? Because Q is the extroverted, yeah. happy, motivational guy. Yeah. But I am introverted. I am like before I step into this Q person. Mm. There's a lot of times where I'm just like in my head, and I just kind of be like. Like, I'm afraid sometimes. Mm. People wouldn't believe that because mm. once I show up, I show up. Mm. But I am actually introverted and extroverted. Mm. People just, I just don't let people see that introverted side of me. Yeah. So that's sense. just an example of, you know, for me, you know, what, what I would say that that people wouldn't know about me. Yeah. Now, that's, yeah, that's, that's interesting. And I'm kind of like thinking about, like, on my end, what is, what is, the adjacent of that or what's mm-hmm. what's what's similar. I guess one thing would be like even though like I handle let's say like conflict like pretty well internally, I'm going through it. Can you talk talk about that? Cause I feel like there's so many people. Yeah, like <laughs> like okay, so like at my job currently, right? I work at a a bowling alley and it's a lot of different problems that arise just throughout the shift. People call out, people not able to make it. Um, customers not getting their food, bartenders not making drink, or whatever the case may be. It's, it's so many different things mm-hmm. that can happen. And through a shift, like, sometimes, like, I'm getting pulled, like, five, six, seven different ways at the same time. Mm. And, like, internally, like, I'm freaking out. Like, <laughs> my heart racing, like, mm-hmm. and this doesn't happen all the time. A lot of time it does. And, like, we're at a point where, like, sometimes I get overstimulated. What happens when you get overstimulated? Do you go somewhere and kind of get like, like yeah, cool down? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I do like deal with like some anxiety and stuff too. So see, yeah. like I would think that yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I don't think people would think that about you because you're the problem solver. Yeah, not only like at work, you're yeah. you're the brand A and R, right? Yeah. Like you solve people's problems. problems. Yeah, for sure. So you wouldn't think that a problem solver is internally going through anxiety. Yeah, very much so. (laughs) Like, it's just kind of like, what? So, um, And it looks different for other people, too, because, like, when you say, like, anxiety, I guess the stigma behind it is, like, somebody is outwardly showing it and it's, like, freaking out or Mm -hmm. it's they're they're having some type of, you know, episode or whatever the case may be. Like, they they breathing real fast Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, me, everything is just all internal and all in my head and it's just, it just like almost like in the inside like your skin is crawling and Ooh. yeah your head spinning and yeah nah like bro that's that's deep because it's easy to help somebody outwardly oh my gosh what's going on like it's easy yeah. to be like let's calm down it's gonna be okay 
But when somebody is kind of just moving around, still smiling, still happy, still solving problems, but yeah. internally, yeah. <sighs> sometimes I'll be going through it. Sometimes, yeah. That's hard, bro. Yeah. What What are some things that you do to like help with that whenever you are experiencing that? Because there's somebody right now that that's going through that yeah. and they're not t- saying it to nobody. Yeah, I mean, um, it's breathing mm. that helps because. Um, and I don't do this enough, but um, a lot of times, like, anxiety comes from worrying about things that haven't happened yet. Like, that's something, like, like something future that you're anticipating. Mm. And the best way of not worrying about that is to be present in the moment. Mm. So, like, you sit down, you focus on your breath work, and you, like, go back inside your body. It helps you be a little bit more present with what, what is happening currently. You can't be... Um, worried so much about like what's about to happen and all these different possibilities if you're worried about what's going on right now. Yo, I think that I right, so for me, I'm like that with roller coasters, bro. Yeah, like it might it might sound crazy, but it's really before I get on, <laughs> like like you're before I get part. on because in my drop. head it's like I'm thinking about the first drop. Yeah. I'm thinking about like. What's going to happen when I get on this ride? And it hasn't even happened yet. It didn't happen yet. Yeah. And it's crazy because I feel like my son mm-hmm. goes through that now, too. And I'm always telling him, like, don't don't get in your head. It didn't happen. Don't think like that. But when I go back into me, I'm like, yo, that's how I think. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I even get like that when I'm about to do a workshop, mm. when I'm about to drop a song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When I'm about to do a podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'm thinking about like all, all the things that can go wrong. Right. There's so many people, bro, that like have that mentality and they don't do it because of it. Mm-hmm. So how do we help somebody who has internal anxiety, mm-hmm. but they still got to solve that problem, whatever that problem might be? Like, how could we help them still push through no matter what? I mean, the best thing is to do is really hit it head on because mm. um, it, it'll be times where like I have issues and problems of my own that I need to solve and stuff like that where like the worst ones is the one that I kicked down the, the, the can which I got plenty still mm. but like addressing these things head on and up front it, it, it allows you to develop that muscle and skill even though it'll almost never feel comfortable per se okay. you'll at least have like the experience of like oh okay i recognized this pattern um last time this happened i reacted this way it was a good reaction it was a bad you know result or whatever the case may be you could build upon that to make sure that like um the next time moving forward it's a more favorable situation even if it's not ideal I like that. What's one thing that you haven't dealt with yet? One thing I haven't dealt with yet. So, of course, like, as I've been, you know, doing all these creative things, one of the things that I've noticed, and um, we talked about this some years ago, was how I was always, like, supporting somebody. My way of getting a W or a win or whatever the case may be was to help this person do this, help this person do this, help this person do this. But, like, looking back, I didn't have anything to, like, show for it, like, Mm-hmm. In regards to like, I have all of this stuff that I've done for people, but it's not documented. Where it's like, if you didn't know me, if you didn't have conversations, like you didn't know that I was involved in this. You didn't know I was involved in this. You didn't know I was involved in whatever situation that I was I was um, mm-hmm. doing. So like building something on my own, where it's like, okay, I've done all of this stuff, but look, like this is proof of concept. Like I'm doing this on my own. Like I put this out, or these are the things that I'm doing. Where it's like now I could, I'll be able to have like proof to show you like without you knowing who I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, what he does makes sense and it probably works. So now is it like you're on like a journey of just like pushing you? Yeah, like I want to say it started during the pandemic. Talk where, about it. Um, so I was in the military at the time. How long you been there? And um, I was in the Air Force for about seven and a half years. Thank you for your service, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, and and with that being said. Um, same thing with the Air Force and stuff too. Reason why like I kind of left because um, I was doing all these different things, and then looking back, I was like, I'm not in a in a better situation in the sense of like I didn't I didn't have nothing to to to, to show for all my efforts. Wow. So I was like, you know what? It's time for me to build something on my own. Mm-hmm. 
And that, you know, ended up becoming, you know, a program I've been developing for a little bit called Brand Like an Artist BLA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's been like the first time that I've been building something, working towards something that was like my own. How is how challenging is that? Very challenging because with with this being said, like I've done plenty of soft launches and you know get it out there and pull it back and put it back out there and pull it back. Mm -hmm. Only because like I want to make sure um, as I'm learning, I'm adding you know the right things to help you know and impact as many people as possible. But also, I've been a part of different programs and stuff like that too. Where one thing I've noticed is and this is just in general any type of business one thing that people are struggling with big corporation small corporation is delivery mm -hmm. like giving people like what they pay for and even more so yeah so um that's something that i've been kind of like self-conscious about kind of like making sure that you actually deliver what the people need or at oh. least tell them or deliver what i told them i could right 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 just be a man of your words right. i think now do you get the support all right, I'm not gonna say do you get the support. Who's your oh. brand and R? <laughs> because yeah. if you have been the problem solver for so many people, mm. who's now helping you solve this problem and push this thing out? Yeah, a lot of it is is really just people that I've been finding online. Mm. So like I've been like that whole mentorship from a distance has been a lot of that. Uh, whether it's like. Chris Dole from the future, mm -hmm. or um, where I'm learning about graphic design and business, or um, David Shans, or someone like Markwell Russell, or whatever the case may be. And and in some aspect, I also like paid for like whatever program and stuff that, that they had too, or products and stuff that they had. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been a mixture of, you know, online, reading books, mm -hmm. um, getting a lot of information, but also being a part of a couple of these programs and either in person or online. Does this help you push things out? What does it help you do, or does it just help you gather a whole bunch of information? A little bit of both. Mm. Uh, a little bit of both. It kept me accountable to keep, you know, pressing forward. Also gave, you know, sense of community too. So like other people that's doing something similar to you, even if it's not the same type of business, mm -hmm. but you all going through this journey together. Um, met a lot of interesting dope people as well doing that, and yeah, that's is. Man, how often do you ask people to help you? That's that's a good question. Something I'm working on too, because um, I have like so many ideas in my head where it's like I'm not always able to articulate like uh, what I need in that moment. So I just kind of like either kick it down the can or keep developing it on my own and stuff like that. Only because like I want to say it's easier to do per se, but it's it's easier to. Kind of figure it out on your own, especially like you know, talking about growing up. Like that was kind of like, yo, bro, I'm listening. I'm, right. I'm listening to you right now, yeah. and I'm just seeing like the the kindergartner, mm -hmm. fisherman, basketball mm -hmm. kid in the room mm -hmm. trying to solve his own problem. Yeah, that's and what it was. you transition now into an adult. Mm -hmm. And you're still trying you know to solve your own problem. Yeah. But the crazy part is you still, you've been helping a lot of people along the way, mm -hmm. which is dope. But that private side that you talked about with yourself mm -hmm. doesn't ask anybody for nothing because you're just so used to being in that room, playing those games, shooting, the, shooting those, shooting in, in the hoop and, yeah. you know, uh, 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 what you said, entertaining yourself. Yeah. So how do we now get out of that that kindergartner mentality now when it comes because you can't do this by yourself definitely can't and and it seems like the ideas that you have is, is way past you because if you really yeah, want to sure. help people and solve problems that right. means that your ideas is way bigger than you so yeah. how do we get this kindergarten kid yeah. To kind of like go to the back burner a little bit yeah. and push yourself out in another way where it's like, yo, listen, all these people that I helped, I need help now. Yeah. And I need I need some support. Let's let's do it. That's like I, I didn't really like connect the two that way. Like now that we're having that conversation, that makes a lot of sense. But um I think and, and I there's something I do work on at work as well, where it's like if it's like ten things need to be done, I can do the ten things. Mm-hmm. By yourself, but, yeah, but I could, <laughs> right? But what I've been doing, like, even if it's something like trivial or small, as of like 
hey, can you go grab some ice for me at the um mm. for the bar or hey, can you, you know, bust down this lane right here or hey, can you do this or that or whatever at work? Like I'm I'm learning how to uh delegate at least the the smaller tasks. Where like yeah. and now I'm thinking like that's like these are the skills that I'm developing that can help me get my own stuff too. Right. So so how how we you got to start delegating your life mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, life, yeah. But yo, when you start delegating, it's like you are releasing trust. Like like I don't know. I want to say releasing trust, but it's like you're you're depending on somebody else. So like now mm-hmm. that five year old is like that five year old is now in the room with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And now instead of you shooting the whole time, you actually got to pass the ball. To somebody else to shoot. Yeah, share a little bit, yeah. maybe change to a whole different situation because <laughs> they don't want to do that. Right. Yeah. You, so it's like you, you're not used to that. Yeah. I even realized, like, even even like you know when you was coming to my house, you right. know what I mean? Because you know my podcast is always in my crib. I'm like, yo, yo, pack. Like, let me know when you when you ready to shake, move, whatever. Yeah. Before I know it, you here. Yeah. I'm like. I thought I was gonna pick you up. I thought, I, and you like, now nah, be there in ten minutes. Yeah. And me just thinking about that, I'm like, you just did it by yourself. Yeah. I'm not gonna depend on Q to like come get me and all that stuff. Like, I'm just gonna get there. Yeah. And I feel like that's a strong mentality, but uh-huh. I think that it could break people it can. when it comes to now. It, it, it can. Like, it's 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 a very useful skill to have to be like independent and mm-hmm. kind of like you know. In the, in the spirit of like you know Curtis can't do it yourself but like at, in the same spirit like he also like preaches that like that's just step one mm. like doing it yourself is like just to get you started okay and, and once you once you start to build something and you start to move forward allow the people that want to help to go ahead and help mm. do you know the people that want to help I feel like I feel like I do oh, that's I, good too I, I, I feel like I do in, in, in certain areas in life Nah. Maybe not all areas, but wow, yo, bro, that's yo, this is powerful. I yeah. know it's somebody right now, like, oh, shoot, I'm like that. I think yeah. about like a um, like the only child, yep, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was, I was pretty see- much like <laughs> raised, even though I have siblings. Like, my, my, my sister is 11 years older than me, mm. so like, I'm going into kindergarten, she's like walking me to class, but she's also like, after she walks me to class, she's walking to her school. Wow. And and she was like in twelfth grade, so like literally like by second grade, like she's out the house, like she's mm. she's. You only have one sister. Um, older sister. I got a I got a younger sister too though. My okay, younger okay. sister is seventeen. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so it's like you you the so you done took the only child syndrome into your whole life. Pretty much. Wow, bro. Pretty pretty <laughs> pretty much, and then like the age gap between like me and my cousins and stuff, especially on my mom's side. It's like the same t- same thing too, like mm. five to ten years. Wow, uh, five to fifteen ish years, depending on. So like even then, it's like growing up. Like I still was almost like in a category on my own. Mm. It's like my cousin wow. was a little bit older than me, so I couldn't do everything that they did. <laughs> the dynamic of that was a little, you know, different too. Like we can hang out for real. Mm. We can hang out a little bit, but like all right, like. You get to stay now. <laughs> We're about to go out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, and then, you know, BLA and, and brand like an artist. I don't, I don't, I never heard this before. I never yeah. heard somebody who's doing this. So I kind of think like you're even doing something that nobody else has done. So it's kind of hard to even ask for help in something that nobody's done before. Yeah, because, like, even in the sense of, like, it's similar things that, like, of course, like, agencies out there that, like, do exactly the t- same type of delivery that I do. Um, but in the way that I, like, execute it or communicate it or with my own little twist, it's definitely, like, its own little thing. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I would definitely love to, instead of, you know, having the, the worry of, like, one of the things I want to do is, like, create, like, logos and stuff. If I had, like, Somebody that was really talented that I could work with that we have some type of process, easy process where like they can like do all the logos and some of the designing. I could still do some of it, but it, it that'd be like some of the help that that mm. can help like push things forward for sure. I love that. I love that. What are some more things? I, I I'm just curious like that how how you can get help when it comes to just building your your empire. Uh, somebody who can like all of my ideas and stuff. 
help me process it and execute it. Mm. So like processing and executing is like I believe it's two different. It things. is. So can you what what do you mean by processing? So like processing ideas like if I had like an idea to um, create some type of creative solution for let's say these entrepreneurs that I'm working with. Let's say I want to put together like a course or something like that, or some type of solution where they, they I can help them. Okay, like let's build a product together. Mm -hmm. So I have this idea of how I want that to happen. I write it down or whatever the case may be. Um, might you know some of it I might use to help AI. You know, how AI I just thought it. about that in my head. But uh -huh. um, yeah, somebody that can like, all right, this is the information that you have. I'm gonna tailor it. I'm gonna fix it up, make it make sense, and then go ahead and put it out for you. And when you say put it out for you, what does that? What do you mean? Like they're they're the ones that deliver deliver the uh service. When you say put I mean it a little bit of that too, but okay. um like and that could be like automated from like a website or something like that. But and is is that the execution process or is it different? That's more execution. Okay. But like processing is like you know getting that idea off the ground like. Mm. That, yo, it's crazy because that's what you do for me all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the fact that we're talking about this because there's so many like powerful people that they they help so many people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like them, mm -hmm. it is like the hardest, hardest thing, thing to do. Yeah, it's way easier for me to help somebody else than to help myself. And, and another thing I thought about was how often do helping people like... We use helping others to make us busy to not help yeah. ourselves. Yeah, that's that happens a lot too. It's like if I could just help this person, this person, this person, I don't gotta really worry about me. Like you said, your wins was uh connected to the people that you were helping, right? It wasn't necessarily connected to you, right? So you're not a selfish person. So what would be your definition of just selfish of that of that term? I, I have a, a different perspective of what selfish is. Like it ha does have like a negative connotation to it. Okay. But it, I just I just think it means like just to be um, aware of self. Like mm. like we, you know you break down you know the word um, self is internal. That's 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 you, right? Mm. And then you got ish, which is like like mm. like blackish or whatever ish. Mm -hmm. Um, it just means it's something like it. So, like, for when we're talking about being of self, like being aware of yourself, it just it just means that, like, like another word, like self centered, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want to be self centered? Like, and, and self centered, like, and not in the sense of the negative connotation of the word, but self centered, like, I'm aware of what's going on with me. I'm centered. Everybody should want that. I'm I'm centered. I'm. Everything starts within, like we're within our body instead of experiencing outside our body, and we're like reacting accordingly based off of what, like, why wouldn't you want to be selfish? Like, mm. why wouldn't you want to be self centered? And I feel like we don't do it enough. How often do you do it? Um, I'm getting better at it. La I'm gonna ask you one more thing. Um, what is an example of somebody being self centered or somebody who actually is aware of themselves? What are some things that they can do? So like I guess the example would be like and, and let's say like this could be taken as like a a um, negative connotation or view right um, you have somebody right they work in the job and this person calls out this person calls out because they have stuff that they need to do that they feel like is more important for the job didn't 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 work in that job that day <laughs> employees your boss or supervisor or whatever the case may be like that is like one of the things that's like bad, like, mm -hmm. that's, like that's like a no no, like mm -hmm. because like how do you run a business and how do you do that when you don't even know who's gonna show up mm -hmm. for the business? That's true. And um, me personally, and it's difference between just like not showing up your commitments and, but I'm not mad at people that's more committed to themselves than they are to these outside like jobs and. Mm. Oh man! Like that to me, like I wish I was more of that. You wish you were more like that. Yeah. And, and not the sense of just calling out, just call out, but like putting myself like more priority. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, making yourself a priority. Yeah, like being more self centered, selfish. Yeah. Yo, I like that because yeah. I feel like the only way that I was able to like really move forward in life is I had to start you being to. a little selfish. You had to. I had to start you thinking about first. me putting me 
and the sensor. And I, I wish that people didn't think of it so negatively. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to do that. Like, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it right now, right? Like, I'm seeing somebody in the middle. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of people around them, right? Mm -hmm. And literally, this person is kind of like giving so many pieces of themselves to these people around this circle. And they're right in the middle. They're right in the center. And as they continue to give to people, they're losing so much of themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, when all of those people disappear and they're gone, that person that's in the middle is broken Mm -hmm. They're lost. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything because they poured out all these things. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if you had that same person in the center and you took out pieces of yourself and placed them in those places where those people were supposed to be around. And you're pouring into those areas. Mm -hmm. You're pouring into your purpose. You're pouring mm -hmm. into your, your health, mm -hmm. your wealth. Mm -hmm. Right. Like all these things. And now when it disappears, all of that comes back inside of you, and now you can go out there and service the whole world. Mm -hmm. Like literally, that's what I'm seeing. But for some reason, we don't tap in like that. Yeah, we we oftentimes we don't. But that's 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 a good um, visual and analogy to kind of like explain. Like you can't pour from an empty cup, pretty much. Can't pour from an empty cup, and and, and not even from an empty cup. But like, let's say you have a full cup. And you start pouring into other people, you become a little bit less empty anyway. Mm -hmm. So like, it ain't even about like being selfish. It's not about like hoarding all this stuff for yourself per se, in my perspective. But it's more so like, oh okay, like let's give them the overflow. Let's, I like let's, that. Let's let's give them the 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 extra. But at the same time, let's develop ourselves where we have so much extra where we still have a full cup. Bro, we gonna close out like that, bro. Uh, <laughs> Yo, listen, um, I wanted to have this conversation with you because I really wanted people to see who you are internally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I, I, you have helped a lot of people. You have helped me tremendously for years. That perception but, campaign is still one of my favorites. <laughs> we, we killed that. Yeah. <laughs> and, but but I, I really want people to know Charles. You yeah, know what I mean? For sure. To know who you are behind closed doors, this simple but complex person. Yeah. Because I think that understanding who you are can help them even more. And you're still helping somebody solve a problem because now you're giving your story. You right. know what I mean? So thank you, bro. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you, bro, to 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 do help yourself, bro. I wanna challenge you to Push yourself, bro. Be a little selfish in this next season of your life, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what I noticed too is um, anybody who's successful, like they had to sacrifice a lot of different things, and one of the things that they had to do was they had to put themselves first. They had to, well, if they had to get what they want out of life, it had to be a little bit more self-serving. Let's go, bro. Yeah, so, Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. To that challenge. So, all right. So talk to that five-year-old. Real quick, in the room, playing basketball, playing games by yeah. himself. Yeah. What advice would you tell that five year old just to 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 make sure that he's he's good? What what advice would you give him? To um. Yeah, I know. Like based off of like you know how you was growing up and um how you was raised, like you didn't want to like ask for too much or you don't want to step on toes or whatever. But don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. Don't be afraid to shake the tree. Mm. If you need to, don't be afraid to um, speak out, even if even if it might get uncomfortable. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Listen, purpose over everything, man. I'm gonna pray for Pack real quick, quick, real quick. Father God, I I just lift up Pack right now. Um, I just pray, Lord, that you continue to pour into him. Don't let him get empty without him being poured back into. I thank you for everybody that he has helped. I thank you for all the people that he has served and all the problems that he solved. But I really just want to pray for him and pray that this in this season of his life, he puts himself first and he's able Lord, to do everything that you have put inside of him to do. I pray over his business. I pray over his company. I pray over all the people who are who's going to help him in this process to take his company to a whole nother level. And I just thank you in advance for all the things you're doing for him. Help him, heal him, um, be with him, 
and show him exactly what it is he needs to do to go to the level that you need him to go to. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm free. I'm free. Won't let the enemy get the best of me. And I'll be, I'll be what you created me. This is my destiny.